Dad! Dad! Dylan hollered from the garden as he flung open the back door to repeat the same call. Johnny was in the kitchen under the sink with drainage pipes in his hand and a puddle of water under his back. I'm here, he mumbled as the boy bounded up to him. I found Roman remains in the garden. Look at this. A whole bottle. I could have had medicine in it. I'll be right with you, young excavator, exhaling whilst twisting the plastic pipes together as his assembly operation started to take shape. Johnny pulled himself out from under the sink and dusted off his knees. This could be a Roman inscription, Dad. Let's give this a quick rinse in some water, shall we? Examining the soil covered glass bottle that his son had just unearthed. He ran the tap with some hesitation, not wanting to look like he couldn't put the drainage back together in front of his son. Cantrell and Cochrane. That must have been a type of Roman potion or medicine. Dylan sucked his teeth like a mini antiques dealer, minus the cravat and the tweed jacket. Well, it must be a rare thing indeed. You don't get many Roman remains around here, young man. Where did you unearth this treasure? Just in front of the greenhouse. I was looking for my tennis ball and the lip of the bottle was under some dirt. I started digging and pulled it up in one piece, smiling proudly. He set the bottle in the draining rack and ran straight back outside to kick a football with his younger brother. Johnny held the bottle up to the light from the kitchen window. No trace of the label, but he knew the shape. It was the fizzy orange he and his friends used to love as kids when he was around the same age as Dylan. He was 11. They were hallowed bottles because of the 10 pence redeemable at the shop upon return. The days when recycling actually paid. The three of them rode around streets on their BMXs. Everything seemed to belong to him in those days with his friends Gareth and Tom. Johnny was their unofficial leader but nobody would acknowledge that if it came up. Had they known the phrase first amongst equals, it might have been just about acceptable. It was the July morning on their long school holidays. It was the marching season. During the 12th fortnight, most businesses were closed and people with money and sense went abroad to escape the constant parades and trouble with the police. Sitting on their bikes at the corner of the newsagent, Tom pulled his new catapult from his jacket pocket. He arched his right eyebrow. He's up for this? And off he rode down to the churchyard. As he gripped his handlebars of his BMX to get ready to follow Tom, he saw Jackie Martin coming out of the shop. She was turning to walk in his direction. Oh God, he thought, is my hair okay? This is the same t-shirt I was wearing yesterday and it's got food stains on the front. Will she notice? Hi, Johnny, she smiled. He froze under her glorious gaze. Just at the moment his foot slipped off his prime pedal that he had his weight on, bashing his shin. Grimacing at the pain, he could only manage to smile back and nod his head as his shin sent throbbing agony up his body. She walked on as he attempted some decorum in pedalling off. Once he had gotten far enough down Banbridge Road towards Holy Trinity, he yelled out what he had been keeping in. Tom was lining empty soft drink cans that he brought in his rucksack on the top of gravestones for their target range when Johnny limped over to join them. Did you tell her that you loved her? Tom asked. Get lost, she's just a boring girl, said Johnny, perhaps overplaying his denial of interest in Jackie. Are you sure we aren't gonna get into trouble for this? Gareth asked. He was roundly stared down by his friends. So long as you don't snitch on us, 
And you'll be like to grass, hissed Tom, stepping back and making aim with a small stone inside the leather of the catapult. Bullseye! called Gareth, when Tom knocked off the first can and got into the spirit of things at last. Can I have the next go? Johnny sat down in the long grass and pulled up his trouser leg to examine the genesis of a shining bruise on his shin. Your turn, Johnny, Tom called, but he was still rubbing his shin. I'll be there in a minute. In that case, you can witness the greatest shot of all time. Tom aimed and fired his catapult at a gravestone much further away, and the sound of glass smashing ran through the graveyard. They walked over to assess the damage. The glass Tom had shattered was a CNC fizzy orange ball that he had found lying in the grass. You idiot! Johnny yelled. We could have gotten 10p for that at the newsagent, you twit. Dylan ran into the kitchen with his brother on two. Dad, Dad, can I let Archie see it? Fine with me, but be careful not to drop it, Johnny cautioned them. Remembering that although he hadn't seen Tom for a few years, he was apparently a successful accountant these days. Dad, your phone's ringing. It's Mum, called Dylan from the hallway. Can you get it for me, son? My hands are wet. Dylan walked in. Here's Dad for you, and handed the mobile to his father, who had now wiped his hands dry. Oh, hi, Jackie. Funny. I was just reminiscing about you there, so I was. <laughs>